Welcome back. Today we're looking into our trusty Solartron here. As you can see, we can see nothing. It's playing up. It died while I repaired that uh, Hewlett Packard 8.12 pulse generator, which is working. It's going to go here on the shelf as soon as I fix that one here. So let's take it off the shelf and have a look what's wrong with it. So here we got it off the shelf. Uh, I just like the design, it's this 70 retro design, I love that. Um, yeah, it's quite big for a multimeter. Um, <laughs> yeah, pretty big. Uh, let's take the cover off, it's only the four screws and then I suspect the power supply fault. We'll find out. So here we have it in its full glory. There's a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> and. Uh, Oh yeah, look at that cap. That's blown. That's got a big... That's got a big bolt. Okay. I don't know if I have to take the board out or if it's enough to take the bottom cover out. But yeah, that's that's definitely shot. Um, the reason why I like it is because it's got HPIB or GPIB bus. They're a bit fancy on the bus. You can't have a Solitron or one of these Solitron meters and any Hewlett Packard instrument on the same bus. I have no idea why it's not working. But as soon as they're on the same bus, it's not going to work anymore. Looks like we're lucky. Let's see if that comes okay with the light. You can see there's a lot of heat and here as well. So here is something hot. Here was something hot in that area. So we might have a problem which is ongoing for a while here and you know that's been soldered here maybe it was me I can't remember I have done for so long I did some repairs on that one but I can't remember what the repair was uh, it's just such a long time ago okay let's uh, pull that capacitor it's interesting it tests as a diode with 160 millivolts and a 10,000 microfarad capacitor 10,000 microfarad and a diode, so I think the loss is fantastic. <laughs> just seeing, uh, I got a feeling it takes ages to charge it. Well, that's interesting. Um, this capacitor is uh, from 2001, I think. Uh, I might have changed that already because look at that, there was a much bigger one in there. But obviously, technology has advanced because all the other chips are from 81 ish, so. That's going to be made in 81 or maybe 82. Yeah, most date codes are from 1981. Uh, so, well, we, we, we've seen some heat on the diode, so we check the diodes. Maybe there's a faulty diode. I had that before and it just, you know, um, it looks all right, and, but it doesn't really, and, and the voltage has a lot of ripple. We need to check the other voltages as well. There's something isn't right here. Um, I suspect there might be some of these because I think these are Philips, and they they prone to fail after some time, quite badly actually. I had a lot of these Philips types here in in my drawers, and they were probably about 25 years old, just sitting in the drawer doing nothing, and they they all tested bad. So yeah. Anyway, we'll carry on. So this is a 10,000 micro 25 volt and it permanently tests fine as a capacitor. It hasn't got that fancy diode effect. This testing gizmo here is not 100% reliable, but if it says it's a capacitor, it's a capacitor. If it says there is a diode in series, it's usually a bad capacitor. Uh, just gonna swap the wires. Because sometimes it goes wild, but I think it does just fine. Come on, it takes ages. Yeah, it's testing the same. It's a salvaged one as well, which is not the youngest one anymore. Don't know how old it is. Can't see it. Don't know. I salvaged it from somewhere. All right, Oi. 
had to be a bit ingenious utilize these two holes because the capacitor is too big for um, clearing the diode so helps a bit get away from the heat a little bit as well just wonder what that is down here not sure if something unsoldered here let me double check that yeah something was definitely cooking here so I think we take the the board out because you can't it's covered by the other board so we have to take it out uh, so we have got the capacitor in uh, fire it up and see what goes okay here we are we got that light here see what happens well it's back to life back to life it works CPI address is correct we've got a working meter okay let's check the ripple before it was about three volts ripple and not uh, capacitor uh, let's check it what we have now yeah we got about two volt ripple now but the problem on the, on the old capacitor was the loss it had an awful lot of loss so uh, just check the five volts and what goes in and out of the regulators here these are all 78 series regulators Get this out of the way here. I'm not going to touch anything this is just the HPIB um, I don't know why I'm always saying HPIB, but because I'm a yeah, I'm biased by the packet maybe. Um, let me check the voltages, what goes in and out of the regulators, uh, just to make sure there's not excessive ripple on some of the signals. Uh, yeah, don't need to show that, just measure it, and uh, then we have a look underneath this one. So I think I found the reason for our problem. This is five milliseconds per division. What's wrong with that? Sorry, glare. Try it again. Five milliseconds per division. What's wrong with it? Uh, put some scale illumination so you can probably see it better. Um, it's 50 hertz. Bad. This is a protractifier, at least from what I can measure, and that puts my alarm bells on. It should be 100 hertz, but it's not. So something isn't right here. Okay, it's almost impossible to figure it out in circuit. I got the feeling that the second from top is poor, but I can't really tell for sure because, um, yeah, it's just the way it is. So I'm going to pull all of them and see until I find the faulty one, because one is faulty. Okay, we got it out and it still measures 25 picofarads. So, it's dead. Let's get another one. So, and that's a new 5408. Brand spanking new one, which measures what it's supposed to measure. Let's put that one in. Don't forget the beads, which are actually keeping the distance from the board. I'm gonna have a closer look at this one if you can see if it's exploded or whatever. So we had to put a bridge on there because the uh, you can see that the track just crumbled away because it was so hot. Uh, I double check that diode. There is absolutely no sign of any physical damage, so it just died. Okay, let's fire it up again and check for 100 hertz ripple on the capacitor, and if that's fine. We shouldn't see any more ripple on the 5 volt because I had a slightly dipping 50 hertz ripple on the 5 volt and I had another look and it didn't look right. So, yeah, sometimes you have to look closely. Alright, let's power it up and check. That's what we're going to see 100 hertz ripple. Alright, so here we got it working. Obviously, open input, so it's and hertz so let's try check the output of that 5 volts here because that's when I noticed the ripple and that's now clean let's go down to half a volt. that's perfectly clean now and I saw a little bit of a 50 hertz dip so that's uh, yeah, obviously if one diode is missing that puts a lot of stress on the capacitor because it has to supply all the current and it wasn't 
he couldn't even do it because um, I'm getting quite warm actually with diodes. That's the reason why they on ceramic beads because there is a lot of heat going through. Okay, so now we need to pull this board. Uh, yeah, which is a bit of a pain, but we need to look what's actually underneath. I, I don't like that half unsoldered joints there. All right, I'll come back. Okay, that looks like a bunch of resistors which unsoldered itself. These two here, they unsoldered and resoldered themselves. Yeah, there's nothing else here. What's that for? I have no drawings of that thing, but it's only the resistors. So we just resolder them. Don't know what they're doing. Maybe it had to do with that uh, ripple on the 5 volts. Because there was quite a bit of ripple on the 5 volts. So maybe that caused some issues. Let me resolder those and then I'll put it back together and see what, what happens. Uh, it's important to keep that away because this apparently is mains voltage. You don't want to have that down there. So I think it is because that switches the transformer on. Um, yeah. Okay. All the wires are back. Let's put that board back and then we'll put it back together and call it a day. Okay. I think we call it good. Um, it works on ohms. It works on volts. But as soon as I select an AC range and go back to volts, it's locking up. Um, so I don't know if the option is fitted or not. Uh, honestly, I can't be bothered with the AC, ra AC ranges because it might not be fitted. I have no idea. I know nothing about it. I, yeah, I barely found the calibration point so I can actually calibrate it. But... Uh, yeah, Solotron again. No manuals whatsoever. Yeah, typical Solotron. It's almost impossible to find manuals for the machines. Uh, some of them are out there. The 7061 is out there, and the smaller ones are out there as well. Um, here we got a 1250. I did a video some time ago. Uh, I have the manual for the 1260 or something like that. Not exactly for this one. And this is a complete mystery here. I'd really love to have a manual for that one. Let me get some light up here. This is a 2721. It's a, it's a counter. It only does 200 megahertz, but it's got a CRT and you can do some statistics and it's got GPIB and it's got everything. It's typical Solitron, 70s design, 80s design. Um, unfortunately, I have no manual. Without a manual, you can't program it. It's a shame. Uh, it was a cheap shot on eBay, probably because of that reason. It works, but there's not much you can do really. If you have, if you can't remote program it, this thing is pointless because it's only 200 megahertz. It, it plots a nice standard deviation plot and things like that. So it's yeah, it's a great machine, but yes, lots of other Solitron stuff. Yeah, if someone has a manual of the 2721, uh, uh, that would be fantastic. Anyway, we call that good, it's working. And uh, let's put the cover back on, don't forget the ground lead at the bottom, because that shields the entire um, the measurement end, basically. Um, I think we fixed the problem. All right, let's put the covers back put it back on the shelf and uh, use it every day basically. This is my go-to meter if I need something decent with plenty of resolution. That's the reason why I have two of them. I, had, I bought this one first a long long time ago and it still works. And this one was an eBay find, very cheap, it didn't work and I think it was the capacitor that had died. Quite possible, who knows. Because 
I remember changing this capacitor because this is a newer one, this is not the old one, which has died again, obviously, because the diode has died now. Alright, let's put it back together. So, all back together, and here we have the little troublemakers. Alright, let's put it back to the shelf and call it a day. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, until next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.